this is Mike Chick 95 and before we get into the review, like I always say, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, join the madness, follow us on Discord of Mike Chick Productions. Now, this video will contain the continuation of the Spider-Man series that we are covering, but we are going to be jumping into a Spider-Man related film, but it's not Spider-Man. This is Tom Hardy's first Venom film that came out in 2018. While trying to take down Carlton Drake's illegal Life Foundation experiments, he bonds with the black symbiote alien named Venom. They must work together to take down Drake and his ultimate plan. Critics rate this film. Critics actually hated this film. They rated it a 3 out of 10. And boy, they, they tore this one to shreds. But audiences rate this film an 8.0 out of 10, which is a common theme when it comes to when critics hate the film, the fans happen to like the film a lot and then vice versa for the other way around. Um, the budget of this film was estimated about 116 million, it's about 110 to 116, around that, around that number, but they boxed office back 856.1 million dollars. That is a huge jump from 116 million, and I'm glad this film got the amount of money it did, got the amount of light, likeness from the audience, and the fact that it got greenlit for two more sequels, which we'll be covering let there be carnage in a later video. But before we get into my actual thoughts, I do have some goofs and some trivia. So goofs! Uh, around the 55 minute mark, there's a drone that crashes into the back of the Chrysler and explodes, but once the smoke dissipates, there's no visible damage on the back of the vehicle. I think it's kind of like one of those blink if you miss it kind of moments where you have to like kind of like go skip scene by scene little notches to kind of point it out. Uh, no damage on the vehicles after uh, the impact during the motorcycle chase. Uh, at this point, I wasn't really paying attention to trying to find those. I was just really enjoying, because that's actually one of my favorite scenes of the movie, is the motorcycle chase, because there's a lot of cool things that are going on, the CGI and everything, and just the, the tension, the action, the soundtrack. It was all just going good for me, so I wasn't really looking for anything bad. And this last one, it's actually quite obvious. It's actually kind of entertaining for if I might say um, at the very end uh, Eddie enters the convenience store while, while talking to Venom about like what to get and everything and it's daylight and then the robber who keeps coming in and like trying to steal money from Chen for like payments or whatever um, after he dispatches that robber it's suddenly nighttime so either time is very fast in that universe or he was in that convenience store for at least six hours. <laughs> Trivia. A lot of this is not really about the film itself. It's kind of like outside, behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, Tom Hardy took the role of Venom for his son, Lewis, who is a huge fan of Venom. And he did it so that he has, so his son has something to like be proud of or something that can please his son so that his son can watch that his dad is actually portraying the character that his son loves. And I actually like the fact that that's one of the reasons why he took the role. And that's kind of a like, cool dad moment. Tom Hardy recorded Venom's lines in pre-production and were played back in an earpiece for the actor on set during the scenes when he was conversating with Venom in his Eddie form, which that's actually kind of a smart technique to do and they actually hit it very well in his ear or they just didn't record that side of his head, but I feel like that's a very smart technique to do and it kind of gave him like spaces in between like what to say and whatnot for the conversation and Again, that's a smart technique. I think I have done something like that before in one of my videos. <laughs> well, that's not way to appear, friend. I've been with them for a long period of time, and then just start calling them names. Listen, you took my stuff and my setup that I need for the channel, and I didn't ignore you. You just up and vanished for months. So I just kind of continued on. But that's actually really cool that that was a thing, and that's how they did that. I kind of figured that they did the lines after, but it was interesting that they chose to do it in pre-production. I think they probably did that while they were still trying to get other people on board for the project and everything. But still, it's cool that Tom Hardy voiced both Venom and himself. And the last trivia bit is Hardy based his performance off of three actors. Woody Allen, Conor McGregor, and the rapper Red Man. And now... Of course, the pros, cons, and comments. Um, I only have two comments. For me, Tom Hardy is the savior of my favorite villains. 
he redeemed Bane with The Dark Knight Rises after that Bane portrayal in Batman and Robin. And again, for Venom, from 2007's Venom, which is, I, I find it funny how one of my favorite actors played two of my favorite villains and made them actually look better on screen than they did in previous uh, renderations. This next comment's kind of a kind of a somber one, but I actually kind of and kind of happy that I know, but know this like in the back of my head, my muscle kind of makes me sad. Um, the fact that this was uh, Stan Lee's last cameo appearance while he was alive, even though he filmed the rest of them rest of the cameos for the MCU up to the in, uh, end game but um like when I was in theaters watching this film for the second time uh I remembered that this film had came out probably a couple weeks before Stan Lee had actually passed away and I, wa and I watched it a second time I think probably a couple days if not like a week after he passed away and it just made me realize that when this film originally came out uh Stan Lee was still alive so this was like his last chance to see one of his Marvel characters on screen and kind of a somber like sweet sad somber moment that made me realize this hey don't give up on her either of you we won't uh, pros Tom Hardy enough said uh, I really enjoyed the horror elements in this film there wasn't really too much of it there was a lot of comedy because it's just that's just how the relationship between uh, Eddie and Venom were portrayed, but there were some really good horror elements that were like sneaked in there last minute. Even with the important missing story elements, I feel like the uh, the crew did good with what they gave us. Because I, I think after seeing this film enough times, you can portray this Venom character without having to go into detail with needing Spider-Man as, as in the origin story for Venom. I think this one was actually pretty good for what it was. Introducing the Life Foundation, bringing those, bringing those other symbiotes and Riot and everything, and finding a way to bring Eddie and Venom together. It's a little hiccupy, but for the most part, the CGI looks pretty good. There are some tiny bits during the motorcycle scene that looked a little off, but nothing that was super off-putting. And I rem remembered one of my friends uh, back in the day, Fatty Ogre, uh, saying that during the big fight scene between Riot and Venom, it was kind of hard to tell the difference between the two symbiotes because they were very close in color and like the blending of them together was kind of messy when it came to the CGI. And I could kind of see it this time around, but just the overall end goal or the overall like look of Venom in this film looked great. There was a good focus on how symbiotes tend to suck the life source out of like their hosts and everything. Especially when it came to like Riot, because he made, basically made his like journey from Malaysia all the way to San Francisco, going from host to host to host, pretty much draining the uh, host like completely dry before jumping into the next one. They did a really good job showing that. Tom Hardy pretty much lives the character. When it comes to method acting, he's one of like the best method actors, I would say, and like going through like trying to like get away from these people that are trying to like capture him while dealing with the symbiote like running around and sweating and like jumping into like lobster tanks and like staying like s like sweaty like and wet and like gross and just feeling like shit and looking miserable he did very good at showing that it just makes me like the movie more and more and more it makes me question why critics fucking hate this movie so much and those very few people out there in the audience who don't like this film. I talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, Venom and Eddie's dialogue and relationship was fantastic. Like, he was either t uh, telling a good enough story or, like, good, like, back and forth uh, bickering and whatnot, even though Tom Hardy's talking to himself. And there's a lot of funny moments that just I just kept laughing the entire time. It's just, it, it's great. Like... They, they nailed that one on the head. Action sequences are fantastic. They nailed it when it came to the action sequences. Just like with Homecoming, with Spider-Man, they did a great job in this one. Like I said earlier, the motorcycle scene is, is one of my favorite scenes in the film, if not my favorite. Of course, it's in the pros, just because it's like the one part of the movie that I remember the most. It's just that whole like chase scene. Venom's look looks fantastic, and I love it. And of course, I love Stan Lee's cameo, just for the fact that 
what I said in the comments. Cons. The obvious one is it's PG-13. And some people will probably say that they did good with PG-13, which they did. They did good with PG-13. It's just, I feel like they would have been able to tell a better story on screen with action with a rated R rating. I mean, come on. Deadpool gets a rated R film, but Venom doesn't. Reshoots and about 30 to 40 minutes of footage being cut from this film hurts the runtime. And that's like the main point of this con is that the runtime for this film feels really short and really rushed. Like, I wish this film was about 30 minutes longer because you can tell that it is chopped to hell. And that's usually not a good sign when it comes to a movie because I'm not a fan of that. But there's a lot of good stuff happening in this movie that keeps it held up high enough to keep it going as a good film. But still, the runtime is just not great. Carlton Drake. Just Carlton Drake. He's a boring, evil scientist dude that gets infected with Riot. Because he wants to go back to the planet and bring all the symbiotes back. It works for the story, but... The actor portrayal wasn't that great. And my last con, which I get it because it kind of shows Venom's like childish like behavior and childish mind. Rolling down the street like a bird in the wind. I'm just going to leave it at that with that one. Now, getting into my final thoughts and my ratings. Um, I had a really, really rough time trying to not fanboy about this film again while watching it because I'm trying to stay like a movie critic for the channel and trying to critique all these films the best I can, even the ones that I fanboy over. But uh to be to be honest, if I were to give you my rating with like no critics aside and just fanboyism, it's a nine point five because Tom Hardy film, Venom film, obvious point there. But going into it, breaking it down pulling out the bad and pulling out the good, weighing it back and forth, bringing in like the numbers and like see the little nitpicks here and there and actually being a critic about it. This film does get an eight and a half. So I do agree with the audience scores and this film is still great. But it's still a 9.5 on fanboyism. But for the channel's sake, it gets an eight and a half. Now the next time you shall see me and anyone else that joins these videos, we're going to be getting back into the Holland storyline and get into Spider-Man Far From Home and then get back into the next Tom Hardy film, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and then finally finishing up our review series with Spider-Man No Way Home and ending the whole series itself with a Spider-Man ranking. But until then, this is Mike Check 95 signing out.